Today, I'm going to recap first season of 2023 adventure, action, comedy series, called One Piece. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more. In Logtown, 22 years before today, they got the infamous pirate Gold Roger standing high up on a platform, about to get executed in front of a whole bunch of folks, with Marine Vice Admiral Garp watching the whole thing. After Garp drops the death sentence, some guy in the crowd asks Roger where he stashed his treasure. Roger says he left it for someone to discover, and bang, he gets stabbed in the back by his executioners. The crowd goes wild and scatters real quick, and Roger's laughing while Garp's all bewildered and worried. The final words of Roger's kick off the great pirate era. Now, in the present day, Monkey D. Luffy's chatting up a news coup about how he's got this itch to hit the high seas and put together a pirate crew like the one Roger kicked off. Something Shanks clued him in on. He tries to get the news coup to come along, but that bird takes off. Luffy's left on a little dinghy that's tacking on water fast. And when he realizes it's a goner, he hops into a barrel that floats away once the boat sinks. Luffy drifts into this naval showdown between the Alvida pirates and a passenger boat, and his barrel gets scooped up during the brawl. Captain Alvida leads her crew in a raid on the ship, and they easily trounce the other crew. After they round up the prisoners, Alvida wants to know where that bounty hunter Roronoa Zoro's at, thinking he's after her bounty. One of her crew rats out that they dropped Zoro off at Sixes Island, but Alvida ain't on his hit list. That sets her off, and she whacks the guy with her duck-shaped club and orders cabin boy Kobe to clean up the mess. Later that night, Kobe's cleaning below deck on the Miss Love Duck when he hears something moving in Luffy's barrel. As he gets close, Luffy pops out, scaring the daylights out of him and macking him scream. Luffy digs around for grub and asks where he's at, and Kobe spills the beans about the Alvida pirates. Luffy spills that he's a pirate too, which throws Kobe for a loop cause Luffy ain't like the brutes in Alvida's crew. Luffy explains that the pirates he looked up to when he was growing up in Windmill Village were the Red Hair Pirates and their captain, Shanks, who used to drop by regularly. He wanted to join them, but they turned him down, so to prove himself, he stuck a knife under his right eye. Back in the present, Kobe asks why Luffy wants to be a pirate, and Luffy says he's got his sights set on finding Roger's treasure, the One Piece, sailing the Grand Line, and having more freedom than anybody. Kobe's floored, cause he's essentially a slave in Alvida's crew, and he's surprised by Luffy's talk of freedom. While the Alvida pirates are snoozing, Kobe tells Luffy he's gotta make a break for it before it's too late. The two of them sneak up top where the crew's catching some Zs, and they head for the helm, where Luffy grabs an oar. Kobe's jiving him directions to the nearest land when Luffy accidentally rings a bell, whacking up the whole crew, including Alvida. She storms out, thinking Luffy's a bounty hunter Kobe hired to take her down. Luffy ain't holding back, telling it like it is about Alvida and what Kobe said about her. That sets her off, and she pulls out her iron mace, swinging it in a rage. The rest of her crew jumps into the fray too, and one of them shoots Luffy, but his body just soaks up the bullet and bounces it back at the shooter. Then Luffy reveals he can stretch his body like it's made of rubber, dodging their attacks. In the midst of her rampage, Alvida accidentally sets the Miss Love Duck on fire and, blaming Kobe, tries to off him. But Luffy steps in, tacking the hit with his head like it ain't nothing. Then he stretches his arm way back and slams it forward, punching Alvida with a move he calls the gum gum pistol. She goes flying overboard, and the rest of her crew throws in the towel. Luffy tells Kobe to fetch a boat and supplies cause he's tacking him along for the ride. Over on Sixus Island, Roronoa Zoro's kneeling at a shrine, paying his respects to someone he knew. This fella comes up to him, and Zoro knows he's been tailing him for days. The guy introduces himself as Mr. Seven and spills that he's been chassing Zoro to invite him into this gang of assassins called Baroque Works. Zoro ain't having it. Though, cause he ain't impressed that they sent number 7 to recruit him. That gets Mr. 7 all hot and bothered, and he tries to off Zoro with his two swords. Zoro draws his own blades, and they go at it, but Zoro comes out on top after cutting Mr. 7 in half. Next day, Luffy and Kobe are bobbing on the sea in a little rowboat. Kobe's wondering how Luffy can stretch his body, and Luffy breaks it down for him. Ten years back, when Luffy was a little tyke trying to get Shanks to take him in, they were at a bar with the Red Hair Pirates. Luffy kept begging Shanks. But Shanks was like, nah, kid, you can't swim. So Luffy got all huffy and went into a room with treasure chests. He found this weird fruit in one of them and chowed down on it. Meanwhile, some mountain bandits led by Haguma rolled into the bar, demanding drinks. Shanks gave him the last bottle, but Haguma smashed it and started trashing the place. Shanks cleaned up without throwing a punch, and Luffy thought that was weak and called him a coward. Luffy stormed out, but as he walked, his arm stretched like rubber. That fruit he ate was a devil fruit called the gum gum fruit that turned him into a rubber man back on the boat. Luffy admits he's got no map or sense of direction, and Kobe's regretting joining him. Luffy asks Kobe what he wants to do, and Kobe reluctantly spills that he wants to be a marine. Luffy decides they'll hit up a marine base so Kobe can sign up, and he can get a map to the Grand Line, but Kobe ain't thrilled. Meanwhile, there's a dame named Nami stranded on a boat with just a treasure chest. Two pirates come along, and she acts like she got attacked by pirates and needs help, like she don't know who they are. 
They agree to help but get all nosy about her chest. When they pop it open, nothing's inside, and when they turn around, she's sailing away on their boat, leaving them high and dry. Once she's safe, Nami goes through the map she swiped. Luffy and Kobe make landfall at Shell's town, home to the Marine 153rd branch. They check out wanted posters of some infamous pirates, then head up a bar where they find Zoro and Nami. Rika, the bartender's daughter, takes a shine to Zoro and offers him chocolate rice balls she made. But she bumps into Helmeppo, son of Marine Captain Axe Han Morgan, who runs the 153rd branch. Helmeppo gets all bent out of shape and smashes her rice balls. Zoro grabs the squished one and eats it before telling Helmeppo to munch on the other one and say sorry to Rika. Helmeppo draws his sword, ready to rumble with Zoro, and that sets off a bar brawl as Marines jump in. Zoro disarms Helmeppo and takes down the Marines with just the hilts of his swords. While all this chaos is going down, Nami knocks out a Marine she was flirting with and starts pilfer in his uniform. Zoro corners Helmeppo, who offers him whatever he wants, and Zoro decides to squeeze some cash out of Morgan. Zoro gets marched into the Marine base to meet Morgan, who's all impressed by Zoro's muscle and invites him to join the Marines. But Zoro ain't buying it. He wants to cash in on Mr. Seven's bounty. But Morgan lays down the law, saying attacking Marines means seven days in the slammer. If Zoro doesn't turn himself in, he won't be collecting bounties from the government no more. Zoro agrees to the lockup, saying maybe he can catch some Zs. Meanwhile, Luffy and Kobe are getting ready to bunk on their anchored boat, and Luffy's scheming on how to swipe that map from the marine base. He spots a sewer pipe nearby and gets an idea. Next day, Helmeppo gets in Zoro's face, taunting him with one of his own swords. Zoro vows to pay him back after his stretch in the clink, but Helmeppo spills the beans that Morgan ain't letting him loose. Meanwhile, Nami slipped into that stolen marine getup and sneaks into the base. After that, Luffy climbs out of a sewer grate and finds himself in the same spot as Zoro. He introduces himself and asks Zoro to join his crew, but Zoro turns him down flat, saying their gigs ain't compatible. Luffy asks what's driven Zoro, and he spills that he made a promise to someone to become the world's greatest swordsman. Luffy respects that and lets Zoro loose, even though he ain't joining up, before sneaking back into the sewer. Inside the base, Nami hits up a library and runs into another marine who says she ain't supposed to be there. Nami claims she's on a mission for Morgan to find a Grand Line map. The marine says no dice, cause those maps are locked up in Morgan's office. But Nami throws him off her trail by telling him to double-check with Morgan himself. But the act falls apart when the marine whose uniform she swiped shows up and recognizes her as a phony. Nami grabs a bow staff and knocks him out, but then Luffy drops in from the ceiling. Nami goes back to play and pretend and busts Luffy, but he ain't fooled. He heard everything and knows she's a faker. Still, he's willing to team up, cause they both want that Grand Line map. Meanwhile, Helmeppo's in his birthday suit messing round with Zoro's swords when Zoro busts in. Helmeppo asks if Zoro's gonna ice him, and Zoro says he's got something way nastier in store. Luffy and Nami, they're strolling down the base corridor when, bam, they bump right into Morgan himself. Nami says she's escorting Luffy to the brig and manages to cook up a quick story about who she is. Morgan lets him go. And Nami whispers to Luffy that she swiped the keys to his office during the encounter. Luffy thinks Nami should hop on his crew, but she shoots him down quick, letting it slip that she despises pirates. They sneak into Morgan's office, searching for the map, and by accident, Luffy flips a switch that makes a safe pop up from the floor. Morgan heads to the library and finds them two marines laid out on the floor, spilling the beans about Nami. He sounds the alarm, hauls himself to his office, and uses his axe hand to bust down the door. With no time to crack the safe, Luffy pulls it right out of the floor with his muscle power. When that safe flies out the window, it takes Luffy and Nami along for the ride, crashing down below in the clearing. Morgan and his goons hurry down to confront M, and Zoro joins the fray. They fight back against the swarm of marines, and when Morgan shows up, Luffy and Zoro square off against him while Nami deals with the grunts. Morgan's a tougher nut to crack than his lackeys, sporting some serious muscle and that wicked axe hand. But Zoro gets the upper hand when he busts out his three-sword style. He pins down Morgan's axe hand with his blades, letting Luffy unleash a gum-gum whip kick right to Morgan's mug, tacking him down. Zoro grabs the safe with the maps and hauls it to Luffy's boat with Nami and Luffy. Luffy starts talking like they're a crew now, but the other two ain't having it. While Luffy gets ready to find Kobe before hitting the road, Helmeppo shows up, his hair all messed up from Zoro's swords, trying to bust him. But Kobe steps in and knocks him out, and Luffy's thrilled. Kobe says he's staying put to join the marines here and finally make his own choices. Luffy respects his decision, and even though they might square off down the road, they part as pals today. Out on a marine battleship at sea, Garp gets a den den mushy call from Shellstown reporting that a pirate in a straw hat swiped a Grand Line map. Garp takes it dead serious and gets ready to head to Shell's town with Bogard. Meanwhile, Kabaji, who was in the bar at Shell's town with Luffy's gang, rats him out to his captain Buggy, telling him about the three pirates and how they got the map. He couldn't stop him cause he was outnumbered, 
and Buggy's already scheming to snatch that map for himself. Ten years before today, Luffy gave his new gum gum fruit powers a whirl over at Party's Bar. Makino laid out the scoop on devil fruits, spilling that each one's unique and munching on one is basically a deal with the devil. In return for superpowers, you're on the outs with the sea and can't swim no more. Shanks walked in, and while Luffy chewed the fat with him, more red hair pirates rolled in, saying they've got supplies for months. Luffy asked Shanks when he'd be back from this trip, and Shanks dropped the bomb that he ain't coming back. In the present day, Luffy's clowning around on the boat while Nami's trying to crack open Morgan's safe. She shoves Luffy once almost sending his straw hat overboard, and he tells her to lay off the hat, it's his most prized possession. Finally, Nami pops the safe open and pulls out the Grand Line map. With Luffy clueless about where the Grand Line is or how the world's laid out, Nami sketches a basic world map. She spills she don't believe in the One Piece, but Luffy ain't changing his mind about finding it. All of a sudden, a ship shows up and starts shooting this red gas around him. The gas knocks him out cold, but Luffy spots a Jolly Roger on the ship before going down. Luffy, Zoro, and Nami wake up in a wooden crate, and Nami figures the marines nabbed him. But Luffy says it was pirates cause he saw their Jolly Roger. They get dropped right into the middle of a circus act by the buggy pirates. The circus is full of regular folks who are pretty much slaves, chained to their seats and following cues from the performers. Buggy, the captain, struts in, and he's after the Grand Line map too. He wants to be the pirate king by snagging the One Piece. Nami tricks Luffy into showing off his devil fruit power, which gives her a chance to bolt out of the tent. But she stops cold when she sees that Buggy's crew flattened Orange Town. Before she can make a move, Buggy's crew catches up and hauls her back inside. Buggy's got plans to question Luffy about that map. Over in Shell's town, Garp and Bogard roll into the 153rd branch. Morgan gives them the lowdown, telling a tall tale about scaring off the invaders even though they got away with the map. Kobe's standing there in uniform cause he just enlisted that morning, and so's Helmeppo. Morgan puts the blame on his boy for not stopping the pirates and gives Kobe props for Savin Helmeppo. Later, Kobe's called to Morgan's office where Garp and Bogard are hanging. Garp starts grilling Kobe bout belonging to the Marines, saying folks saw him with Luffy in the bar before the pirate raid, suspecting he's a snitch. Kobe decides to come clean, telling how Alveda captured him and Luffy busted him out. He says it's his dream to be a Marine and nail pirates like Luffy, and Garp buys it, but makes it clear that Kobe's gonna help him go after that straw hat pirate. In Orange Town, Zoro's strapped to a wheel, and Nami's locked in a birdcage. Zoro don't trust Nami after she bailed on him before, but he's gotta team up with her to bust out cause there ain't no other option. Nami's working on picking the lock to set herself free. Later, Kabaji from Buggy's crew comes in, introduces himself to Zoro, and spills the beans that Zoro offed his brother for the bounty. Zoro ain't got a clue about Kabaji or his bro, and that just makes Kabaji hotter under the collar. The pirate starts a twisted game, tossing knives at Zoro while he's spinning on that wheel. In the big top of the circus tent, Buggy's got Luffy strapped to a contraption that's stretching him out from head to toe, but Luffy's rubber body's laughing it off, macking it useless as a torture gadget. While wondering why Luffy chose the pirate life, Buggy spots his straw hat and figures out it's Shanks' hat, spilling that he and Shanks were crewmates back when they were Luffy's age. Buggy says they were pals once, but Shanks turned on him and he asks if Luffy got the same treatment. Luffy denies it hotly. Buggy decides to grab a kid from the crowd and put him in the stretchy contraption, but Luffy manages to wriggle free and break loose. He clocks Buggy in the kisser, and the crowd freaks when Buggy's head goes flying. But Buggy's got a trick up his sleeve, cause he's also eaten a devil fruit, the chop-chop fruit, letting him split his body parts apart. Buggy separates his hand and sends it behind Luffy's noggin, blowing up a gas bomb that knocks Luffy out. Ten years ago, Luffy was kicking it at Party's bar when Haguma and his gang came back, thirsty for some drinks. Luffy calls Haguma out for disrespect in Shanks, which gets Haguma all riled up. Shanks rolls in and tells Haguma to cut Luffy loose, but Haguma ain't tacking the pirate seriously after their last run-in. Lucky Roo takes out a bandit pointing a gun at Shanks, and that sparks a brawl with Shanks, Roo, Ben Beckman, and Yasop whipping the bandits easy. In the midst of the mayhem, Haguma makes a break for it with Luffy. He rows Luffy out to sea, aiming to off him, but a giant sea king called the Lord of the Coast shows up from the deep and flips the boat. Then it swallows Haguma while Luffy's sinking, unable to swim. But Shanks shows up and pulls Luffy out of the water, and the Lord of the Coast surfaces, tacking a swipe at their boat, but Shanks and Luffy barely dodge. Shanks stares the beast down and tells it to scram, and it actually obeys. Luffy hugs Shanks in relief, but then he notices Shanks lost his left arm to the Lord of the Coast's attack. Shanks don't sweat it, only caring that Luffy's safe and sound. In the present, Luffy wakes up in a glass tank slowly filling with seawater, macking it tough for him to even move. Buggy offers Luffy a deal, pledge loyalty to him, and he'll let him out. But Luffy ain't having it, even as the tank fills up, submerging him. In the green room, Kabaji ain't thrown any knives at Zoro yet. One of his tosses loosens the ropes on Zoro's wrist. Kabaji's focus on Zoro gives Nami the chance to slip out of the cage and catch Kabaji off guard. 
Zoro breaks free and puts Kabaji in a chokehold, knocking him out cold. Nami frees Zoro's other hand, and they grab their weapons before heading to the main show area, ready to deal with any clowns on their path. Zoro and Nami make it to the stage, and Nami busts Luffy out of that tank by throwing her staff at it, shattering the glass. Luffy coughs up the map while getting the seawater out of his lungs. Buggy snags the map, though, cause Luffy's focused on getting his hat back first. Zoro goes after Buggy, but his sword strikes don't do squat against the clown's devil fruit power. Buggy splits his whole body into tiny bits and sends them flying around the tent, laying a smackdown on the trio. While Zoro and Nami regroup, Buggy zeroes in on Luffy, holding him down by the neck and stabbing through the straw hat with his other hand. But Luffy spots some empty chests by the tent's edge and hatches a plan. He tips off Zoro and Nami, and they work together to whack Buggy's body bits into the chest. Nami slams them shut, preventing Buggy from pulling himself together. Eventually, all that's left of Buggy is his head, hands, and feet. Luffy stretches his arms back and lets loose a final strike. The gum gum bazooka sending Buggy flying out of the tent and off the island. Luffy, Zoro, and Nami snag the map back and start getting ready to hit the road. But first, Luffy sets out to free the folks of Orange Town from their chains, letting them know he's setting them free, not claiming them as his subjects. Later on, the trio sets sail from Orange Town with the locals Jivin Emma Heartfelt send off. Luffy recalls the last time he saw Shanks. When Shanks and his crew were about to leave Windmill Village for good, he had a talk with Luffy. Luffy told him he was staying and aiming to form his own pirate crew one that had surpassed Shanks. Appreciating Luffy's resolve, Shanks handed over his straw hat, saying Luffy could return it once he'd grown as strong as he promised. Over in Shell's town, Garp addresses the 153rd branch in the open space. Morgan's tied up in front of Emma's punishment for lying about what really went down during Luffy's raid. Garp tells Em that the Marines' fight against pirates won't be tainted by their own corruption and announces a direct hunt for straw hat Luffy. Kobe listens to Garp's words, torn between his loyalties. Meanwhile, as Luffy, Zoro, and Nami set sail for the Grand Line, Nami heads to the cabin and takes out a special little Den Den Mushy, popping it in her ear. She makes a call to someone, spilling the beans that she's got the map to the Grand Line. For the past seven years over at Syrup Village, usopp has been on a daily routine. He rings that bell, dashes through the streets, shouting about pirates storming into the village. Started with the whole panic thing among the villagers, but now they're just plain fed up with Usopp's shenanigans. Out on the sea, Luffy, he's showing Nami the Jolly Roger he whipped up for their gang, calling him the Straw Hat Crew, while Nami and Zoro keep hammering home that they ain't a crew. Then, Zoro tips off Nami about this secret spot under the cabin floorboards, which he mistook for a toilet, and it's tacking in seawater. Nami, quick as lightning, scrambles to rescue her stuff and finds her Den Den Mushy earpiece busted. Luffy's got his sights set on a real ship for the crew. And Nami plots their best course to the Gecko Islands before this tub takes the plunge, luckily for them. There's a decent shipyard there. On Garp's warship, Kobe and Helmeppo are sweating it out, tacking care of the rigging. Kobe spots a lousy knot tied by Helmeppo, the top dog among cadets, so he redoes it right. Helmeppo don't give him props, though, he dishes out a tongue lashing. Then, Garp strolls in and asks who's behind that knot, thinking he'll get chewed out. Helmeppo passes the credit to Kobe. But surprise, Garp actually thinks it's top-notch work and invites Kobe into his cabin. Since Kobe's got some know-how from his time with the Alveda pirates, Garp decides to school the young cadet in strategy with a game of Go. Kobe drops the first game, cause he's too focused on playing defense and not Lawson instead of going on the offensive. In the next rounds, Kobe switches gears, goes all out attack, and starts chalking up wins. Garp tells him that's the mindset to take on pirates, cause those scoundrels thrive on action, so we gotta be the ones tacking the initiative, not playing catch up. Then, Helmeppo barges in and spills the beans that they've tracked down Luffy's Jolly Roger and traced his crew to the Gecko Islands. Garp maps out their course, and Kobe's now the big shot among cadets, cause he's the better fit, not cause of any favoritism. Over in Orange Town, Buggy's back at his big top, putting himself back together. But there's this strange, otherworldly fella coming up to him, saying Arlong wants to have a word with him. Buggy tries to spring a surprise knife attack, but this guy sidesteps it like it's a piece of cake and clocks Buggy in the face, knocking him out cold. They drag Buggy to another spot, and who's there to greet him? Arlong, the baddest pirate in the East Blue. Arlong demands some payback from Buggy, and Buggy's got nothing. So, he starts yapping about how Arlong should go after Luffy instead. Arlong ain't got a clue who Luffy is, but Buggy spills the beans that Straw Hat's sitting pretty with a map to the Grand Line. He offers up his connections to help Arlong hunt him down, and Arlong takes the bait. Now, when Luffy, Zoro, and Nami pull into Syrup Village on the Gecko Islands, they make a beeline for that shipyard. Zoro spots Buggy's wanted poster and lets out a curse for not nabbing that clown. But Luffy reminds him that he's an outlaw now, too. Luffy's dreaming big about scooping up a colossal ship, while Zoro and Nami hunt for a smaller one they can swipe with ease. Luffy's baffled by the thought of pirate thievery but ain't got a clue how to pay for a ship. Then, he spots a ship sporting a sheep's head on the front and can't resist checking it out. 
Yuzop pops up from it, ready to chat. He says that ship ain't up for sale cause it belongs to a loaded buddy of his who owns the whole shipyard. He's willing to take him to see this well-off friend of his. Yuzop leads the straw hats to this massive mansion. But even though he keeps saying he's tight with the owner, his sneaky moves around the place and dodging the staff make it seem otherwise. Finally, caretakers Sham and Butch I catch him red-handed and try to give him the boot. But hold on, the mansion's boss, Yuzop's pal Kaya, rolls up with her butler clad or in tow. Kaya's all smiles, welcoming Yuzop in the straw hats with open arms, while Clahadors throw in major shade at their presence. Kaya invites him to a feast for her 18th birthday. But there's a catch, Clahador lays down the law, saying they gotta clean up and change before they can grub. While the straw hats rock some new duds for the dinner, Luffy and Nami strike a deal. If Kaya says yes to Jivan him the ship Luffy's iron, they'll sail it. If not, they're swipping a smaller one, which is what Nami and Zoro want. Zoro's got this strange feeling like he's seen Clahador before, but he can't put his finger on it. Meanwhile, Yuzop pays Kaya a visit and hands her a birthday gift, a rock he claims is a pearl. Then, he spins this wild tale about his adventures as a top-notch pirate, and Kaya's loving every minute of it. Time for dinner, and lawyer Mary joins the crew at the table. Luffy steps up to lay it all out on the line, telling Kaya their pirates and struts right on the table toward her. Clahador, Zoro, and Nami are lost in their minds. Before Kaya can say a word, she starts coughing like crazy and Clahador steps in. Kaya wants him to stay the night despite his objections and Clahador has no choice but to go along. Later that night, down in the wine cellar, Mary confronts Clahador about his plan to grab control of the shipyard that used to belong to Kaya's folks and now belongs to her. Clahador tries to brush Mary off, but then he pulls a fast one by moving so quick it looks like teleportation. He sneaks behind Mary and jabs him in the back with these crazy claw blades he's got. Meanwhile, Luffy and Zoro head out of their digs at the same time, all on the hunt for some grub. They hit the kitchen and bump into Yuzop. Yuzop starts spilling the beans about Kaya, how her folks perished at sea. Then he drops the bombshell that his old man was a pirate who set sail when he was young. Luffy suddenly connects the dots and realizes Yuzop's dad is none other than Yasop from the Red Hair Pirates. Over in another part of the joint, Nami steps out of her pad and starts pilfering valuables from the hallway, stuffing them in her pillowcase. She hears a noise and tries to double back but winds up walking right into Kaya's room instead. Kaya's sharp, though, she figures out what Nami's up to. But instead of blowing her cover, she starts shooting the breeze with Nami. Kaya opens up about how she got sick after her folks passed and how Clahador's been kinda smothering her. They start connecting, and before Nami pieces out, she drops some wisdom on Kaya, telling her not to let anyone boss her around. Kaya lets Nami take her loot, but Nami puts it all back once she's out in the hall. Zoro and Yuzop decide to hit the wine cellar for a drink, but they stumble upon Mary, laid out cold on the floor. Clahador pops out with Sham and Butcheye, sporting those claw blades of his. Finally, Zoro gets it, Clahador's none other than Kuro, that wanted pirate, captain of the Black Cat Pirates. You know, the one who was supposed to be dead thanks to Morgan. Kuro spills the beans on how he faked his own death, tacking advantage of Morgan's ego. He goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Zoro's swords, then pulls off this crazy speed move that's almost like teleporting. Next thing you know, he's behind Zoro and Sham smacks him over the noggin with a bottle, knocking him cold. A terrified Yuzop makes a break for it, while Kuro, Sham, and Butchai toss Zoro and Mary down a well to cover their tracks. Butchai wants to grab Zoro's swords, but Sham insists they toss him in the well to erase all the evidence. As for Yuzop, Kuro's got no worries about what he'll say, cause he knows no one will believe him. Kuro's words hit the nail on the head when Yuzop rings that bell, trying to warn the villagers about the black cat pirates. But they all figure it's just Yuzop spewing his usual tall tales, so they chew him out something fierce. Turns out, Yuzop started with these wild stories cause he believed his old man would come back. He even told his ailing mom Banchina about it, and she encouraged his faith before she passed. Back in the present day, Yuzop's crumpled on the ground, crushed that no one believes him. But then, Kobe shows up and tells him he believes every word. Kuro, Sham, and Butchai stumble upon Luffy crashed out in the kitchen. Dude had dozed off after slurping down the soup Butchai spiked. Yuzop takes Kobe and Helmeppo on a mission to Kaya's pad to call out Clahador as a pirate. But, you see, Kobe can't slap the cuffs on Clahador cause there's zero proof to back Yuzop's accusations. But Clahador tosses Emma curve a ball by handing over a code Luffy. When the clock strikes midnight, Kaya's all grown up, and Clahador tells Sham and Butchai to offer her. Yuzop rolls up to Kaya's bedroom to spill the beans about Clahador, but she ain't buying it. Nami shows up to back Yuzop's play, just as Kuro locks down the joint, battening the hatches. Kuro makes his move toward Kaya's room, looking to take her out with them cat claws. Zoro wakes up in the well, and memories of his childhood flood in. Back in Shimitsuki village, he was a real hotshot, besting everyone except Kuna, the master's daughter. After tacking an L from her with them steel blades, he made a pact to become the world's slickest swordsman. Tragically, Kuna bit it in an accident. To keep his promise, Zoro set his sights on that title and got Kuna's heirloom katana, the Wado Ikamanji. 
Now back in the present, Zoro climbs out of that well and saves Luffy from Kobe and Helmeppo. They haul tail back to the mansion. Zoro gets in a scrap with Sham and Buchai in the foyer, while Luffy squares off with Kuro. Kuro's stealth foot moves let him slip and slide away from Luffy's blows, and he sneaks in some hits of his own. But once Luffy tunes into Kuro's groove, he lands a haymaker that floors Kuro. Luffy pins him down and drops a gum gum bell, sending Kuro flying out the mansion window. As a big thanks for the Straw Hat's help, Kaya gifts him the caravel Luffy had his eye on, and Luffy dubs it the Going Merry in memory of Merry. Plus, they welcome Yuzap as a full-on crewmate. They say their goodbyes to Kaya and Split. Meanwhile, Kobe and Helmeppo report back to Garp, spilling the beans about their flop and catching Luffy. Garp, clocking the Going Merry with Luffy's Jolly Roger, takes aim at the ship. Luffy spots the old man through a spyglass and recognizes him as his granddad. Grandpa! Garp, Luffy's grandpa, makes a move on the Going Merry, tossing a cannonball at the ship with his own mitts. But Luffy sends that cannonball flying, smacking the marine ship's sail. The Going Merry dips into the mist, ditching those marines. Garp sends Dracul Mihawk, one of the seven warlords of the sea, to chase after and nab Luffy. Mihawk takes out one of his marks, Pirate Krieg, before tailing Luffy in the Samba's region. When Kobe objects, Garp schools him on how to bend his moral code cause the world ain't always fair. Luffy gets a whiff of grub and drops anchor at the floating diner, Bear 80. He meets Sanji, the cook who's been bumped down to waiting tables by the owner, Zeph. Sanji kicks the daylights out of two rowdy customers with his fancy footwork, leaving Luffy mighty impressed. Luffy chows down, but when it's time to pony up, he can't cover the tab. So Zeph orders him to mop the decks for a year to square things. On break, Sanji spills his dream to Luffy about finding the all blue, that legendary ocean where the four seas meet. But trouble brews when a pirate from Krieg's crew, the one Krieg was chewing up, lands at Bear 80. The dude's starving and warns of the horrors lurking in the Grand Line, the only one surviving from his gang. Mihawk pulls up at the Bear 80, hunting for Luffy. Zoro, clocking him as the world's slickest swordsman, calls Mihawk out for a duel, flipping off Nami's advice. As the day breaks, Zoro and Mihawk square off. Mihawk, thinking Zoro's outclassed, starts with a wee dagger, parrying all Zoro's strikes. But when he sees Zoro's steel determination, he breaks out his trademark blade, Yoro. Zoro takes a beat down and gets hurt bad. Watching Luffy and Zoro's grit, Mihawk decides to cut him a break and reports to Garp that they're off the hook. The Straw Hats hustle to attend to Zoro, and Zeph takes on the role of tending to his injuries. Zoro remains out cold and gets his rest aboard the ship. Luffy extends an invite to Sanji to join his crew, but Sanji turns it down, explaining that he's got his own reasons to stick with the Barity. He delves into his backstory. Back in the day, Sanji worked as a cook on the orbit when the ship got hit by Zeph's pirates. However, a massive wave sent the ship to the bottom of the sea, leaving Sanji and Zeph as the only survivors stranded on an island. Zeph gave Sanji all the food he swiped from the ship, even going so far as to chow down on his own leg to survive. He did it cause he shared the same dream as Sanji, wanting him to live and find the all blue. In the present day, the Barity gets an uninvited visit from fishman pirate Arlong and his crewmates. Arlong tailed Luffy to the Barity with an assist from Buggy, seeing humans as beneath him. Arlong threatens to mess with the innocent diners unless Luffy steps up. Luffy squares off against Arlong, who insists on grabbing his Grand Line map and half of his cash. Luffy gives him the cold shoulder, and the brawl begins. Even though Luffy packs more punch than your average Joe, he can't bring Arlong down. Arlong, being a fish man, packs a meaner punch. Turns out Nami's been in cahoots with Arlong, working as one of his crewmates, and she nabs the Grand Line map from the ship. Arlong tosses Luffy into the drink before tacking off with Nami. Sanji swoops in to save Luffy from a watery grave. Luffy gets back to the ship where Zoro's tacking it easy. After a quick chat, Zoro finally wakes up from his nap, swearing his loyalty to the straw hats. Sanji, tacking Zeph's orders, decides to hop on board as the crew's cook, leaving the restaurant behind with a tip of the hat to Zeph for his sacrifices. The straw hat pirates set sail toward their next stop to track down Arlong and rescue Nami. Meanwhile, Garp decides to go all in with the marine forces against Luffy, telling his crew to step up their game. Eight years back, Nami and her adopted sis Nichiko were brought up in Coco Village by their adoptive mom, Belmere. But the village got hit by the Arlong pirates. Arlong ordered the townsfolk to pay up every month, or else. Belmere, unable to pay for herself and her kids, was tempted to fib, claiming she had no kids. But she refused to deny her daughter's existence, spilled the truth, paid for her kids, and left herself out. Arlong offed Belmere, spared Nijiko and Nami. Nami chose to hitch her wagon to the Arlong pirates to free her village. Arlong promised to hand the village back for a hundred million berry, and in return, Nami played cartographer for him. But for going with Arlong, Coco Village slammed the door in her face. In the present day, the Straw Hats pull into the Konomi Islands and get the lowdown from Najiko about Nami Bane and cahoots with Arlong. Meanwhile, Arlong makes a shady deal with corrupt Marine Captain Nezumi to sweep his dirty laundry under the rug. Coco Village can't foot the monthly bill, so Nami, raising enough cash, decides to buy the village back from Arlong before he turns it to dust. 
Arlong agrees but sends Nezumi to Nami's crib. Since Nami's dough was stolen goods, Nezumi snatches the treasure for the government. Realiz and Arlong sent Nezumi to stop her from saving the village. Nami lets loose a string of curses, stabbing the Arlong pirate's tattoo on her shoulder. Luffy steps in to lend a hand and gets ready to throw down with Arlong to liberate the Konomi Islands. But the Arlong pirates already did a number on Coco Village, setting it ablaze and tacking it down. The Arlong pirates left Coco Village in ruins, and the Straw Hats were determined to infiltrate Arlong Park and take on Arlong and his crew. They split up, each taking on different parts of the battleground. Yuzop goes head to head with Chu, who chases him into the forest. Chu launches alcoholic projectiles at Yuzop like bullets. But Yuzop turns the tide by igniting the alcohol with a fiery shot, leading to Chu's explosive defeat. Meanwhile, Zoro and Sanji square off against the lower-ranked Arlong pirates in the common area. Sanji faces off against Kirubai, a fishman karate practitioner, and defeats him with his black leg style, sending him crashing into a bar. Luffy and Nami confront Arlong in her former office, and she makes a quick exit to leave the showdown to Luffy and Arlong. Even though Arlong boasts superior strength and Luffy's regular moves don't faze him, Luffy decides to bring the house down, quite literally. He demolishes the building, knocking Arlong through multiple floors and causing the entire structure to crumble. After victorious battles, the Straw Hats throw a bash with the Coco Village survivors. Tharp steps in when Nezumi tries to pin Coco Village's destruction on Luffy, leading to a confrontation. Luffy gets soundly beaten by Garp, but after witnessing Luffy's unwavering determination and pirate ambitions, Garp decides to cut him some slack. Instead of arresting Luffy, Garp hauls in Arlong and his crew. Next day, Kobe breaks the news to Luffy that, upon Nezumi's request, Luffy's now sporting a bounty of 30 million, the highest in East Blue. This achievement doesn't go unnoticed by his pals across the seas, including Makino, Kaya, Zeph, Shanks, and Mihawk. After bidding Coco Village goodbye, the Straw Hats set sail for the Grand Line. Meanwhile, Garp takes personal responsibility for training Kobe and Helmeppo, seeing them as standout marines. But Luffy also grabs the attention of another, less friendly marine. 